You know, I'm in a very fortunate position. I get to try out a whole host of guns, different ones, week after week. And I have a very understanding wife who has no problem with me having quite a collection of some very nice and varied guns. And I have some air guns that I would never want to part with. High on that list is the Virock HW110. And this is mine. I love everything about it. To me, it is the benchmark that some of the others I test are judged against. Then they brought out the HW44 pistol. Expensive, but superb quality. Now I have the gun to complete the tabletop trio of temptation, the HW110 carbine. But does it uphold the quality and desirability of its two siblings? And is there really a place for it? Hello and welcome to AAR On Air. You are looking at the face of a chocoholic holding all the golden tickets to Willy Wonka's all-you-can-eat buffet evening out. It's days like this that make all the hard work creating these videos worth it. I have reviewed my HW110 in the past and the full review is here if you want to take a look. Now I am biased, I admit, but most of the air gun press will agree with me when I say it is superb. I've also reviewed the HW44 and found this to be superb, but the high price could put a lot of people off and I understand that. Not everyone has that amount of spare funds lying around to spend on a sub six foot pound air pistol. Again, the review for this is up here if you want to take a look. So, why do we need a mid-sized version of the three? Well, let's start with a look at it first and have a walk round and a few statistics. The length is the key issue here. The shorter carbine is 88 centimeters long in comparison to the 98 centimeters of the standard h110 so does 10 centimeters or four inches make all that much difference i know i know i can hear the inappropriate comments are beginning to formulate in the minds of some of you out there already but in this instance it could be a case of less is more. When out hunting, this shorter length can make it far easier to use in confined spaces if you're surrounded by trees or the like. Of course, it's going to weigh slightly less also, making all day carrying easier as well. This is the 177 caliber version, but it is available in the 22 caliber if you prefer. Of course, this is the sub 12 foot pound UK version. The stock is in black and it's a rubberized, a very grippy, non slip finish. I've heard some people complain about this, but I love it. It has the feel of quality. And my 110 has never had a single problem with durability. Towards the front of this is a small, short Picatinny rail, Picatinny rail, easy for me to say, which could be used for torches or quality bipods or even a pistol grip. I think that's a nice addition. The safety and the magazine catch is in black on this version rather than the silver colour of its bigger sibling. These then match the rest of the black gun, such as the polymer upper and cylinder surround and interchangeable side cocking lever. The cylinder on this is naturally shorter than the standard rifle 
and has a maximum fill pressure of 200 bar in this sub 12 foot pound version. And sadly, I can't find the exact CCs anywhere, but the shorter length of the carbine cylinder is surely likely to mean fewer shots. In the interest of not simply firing a couple of tins of pellets, I can't give you the exact shot count on both of these, but as I have said before, how many shots do you actually need? Surely you're not going to get through something like two, three, four, five hundred on a day's hunting. Naturally, shot count will vary depending on your country's power restrictions, uh, calibers, etc. The gauge is my only gripe with the Viroc because you have to look down the business end to see what you have in the tank. Not normally a wise thing to do. Best do it when it's unloaded and in safe mode. Whilst we're talking safety, this has one of my favourite safeties on a rifle. With its ambidextrous, oversized catch with clear red dot and ultra solid click to know when it's in place. Loading this gun is a strange one. Strange from a point of simplicity itself to load the 10 round magazine. This is such a simple design that it can actually be loaded one handed. does not involve any confusing reverse pellet loading and rotating magazine covers while standing on one leg and can only be done with 14 fingers knowing you'll only have 13 by the time you've done it and half of the pellets will be deformed at the end. Sorry, rant over. I just love engineering that it's at its simplest and not necessarily over complicated for the end user. Once it's loaded up with pellets, this is where the slightly complicated bit comes in. You need to pull back on the side lever, then lift the magazine lock, drop in your magazine, lock it back down into place, push forward, and then you're good to go. Some would say the lock lever should be a pull back item similar to the BSA type but once you get used to this it's very quick and easy and above all very sure footed. You do get two of these in the box and they are fully interchangeable with the bigger 110 and the 44 pistol as well, which is a nice touch. The supplied Virox silencer makes this ultra quiet and in itself is a superb quality item. So I suppose the only other thing to ask really is does the shorter barrel affect the accuracy? because that 10 centimetre difference is also transposed into a 10 centimetre shorter barrel. Let's get some targets up and set out at 40 metres and shoot these guys side by side for a direct comparison. I think it's safe to say that the 10 centimetres hasn't affected the superb accuracy of the HW110 and it's easily going to hit what you're aiming at. It must be said the 110 does make you look good. It is that easy to shoot and user friendly. Price. Well, ironically enough, there isn't a lot of difference between any of these three. because apart from a bit of length, they're all effectively using the same mechanicals. The pistol 
is about £650 UK. The carbine is about £750 UK. The rifle is also about £750 UK. Is it expensive? Well, it's more expensive than some PCPs and a lot cheaper than some of the others. Is it value for money? Well, it depends if you've got £750 or not. Is it worth it in my opinion? Yes, most definitely. And if you don't quite have this much money, either look for a good second-hand one, or if you possibly can, save up a little longer. If you're serious about your air gunning, then this is not going to disappoint you. It would be about the last gun I would get rid of out of my collection. Thanks for watching.